Hey guys, welcome back to Med which Made Simple. In this video, we're going to see about gastric secretions. Now, let's begin. Before we talk about gastric secretions, you need to know about the types of glands in stomach. There are basically two types of glands in stomach. Oxyntic glands, which are also known as gastric glands, which further includes cells such as mucus neck cells, which secretes mucus, peptic or chief cells, which secretes pepsinogen, parietal or oxyntic cells, which secretes hydrochloric acid and intrinsic factor. The other type of gland is pyloric glands. It is also composed of mucus neck cells, peptic cells, and in addition to that, they also contain something known as G cells, which secretes gastrin. Now we'll see about the location of the gastric glands in various parts of the stomach. Basically, the stomach has got parts such as fundus, body, pylorus. These are the main parts of the stomach. The oxyntic glands are basically distributed in the body and fundus of the stomach, which contributes to the proximal 80% of the stomach. The pyloric glands are located in the pyloric antrum, which is the distal 20% of the stomach. In addition to the above mentioned glands and cells, there are something known as surface mucus cells which are present throughout the entire surface of the stomach mucosa. The main function of the surface mucus cells is to secrete the mucus layer which is present on the inner lining of the stomach. This mucus is thick, gel-like and alkaline. The main function of this mucus layer is to provide protection to the stomach wall from the highly acidic gastric acid and it also helps in lubrication of the food which we eat. The stimulation of mucus from the surface mucus cells is stimulated by eating food. So, following consumption of food, the surface mucus, mucus cells are activated and they start to secrete the mucus layer in the inner wall of the stomach. Now let's see about the composition of gastric juice. The composition of gastric juice can be classified into water and solutes. In solutes, it can be further classified into inorganic compounds and organic compounds. The main inorganic compounds secreted in the gastric juice are the hydrochloric acid or HCl, sodium, potassium and bicarbonate. The organic compounds secreted by the solutes are enzymes such as pepsin, gastric lipase and gelatinase and also intrinsic factor which is helpful in vitamin B12 absorption. Now let's see about the mechanism of gastric acid secretion. Okay, on stimulation of food, on stimulation by food, that is once we consume food, what happens is the parietal cells start to secrete gastric acid. Now here we're gonna break down the mechanism and explain you. The first thing which is gonna happen following stimulation by food is the water present in the parietal cells in the stomach start to break down to H plus that is hydro hydrogen ions and OH minus that is hydroxyl ions. What happens after that is there's something known as hydrogen potassium ATPase or hydrogen potassium pump which secretes hydrogen ions into the lumen of the stomach in exchange with potassium ion from the lumen inside the parietal cell. Okay, so hydrogen ion is sent into the lumen, potassium ion is sent inside the parietal cell from the lumen. Okay. In addition to that, potassium ions also enter the parietal cells from the other side via a transporter known as sodium potassium ATPase, which is present in the basolateral side of the parietal cell. This potassium is also used for further exchange of hydrogen ion into the lumen. This potassium ion gets back into the parietal cell and this goes to the lumen of the stomach and again this gets exchanged with hydrogen ions through the hydrogen potassium ATPase. Now we saw how the hydrogen ions, is, hydrogen ions are secreted into the lumen. Now there's something known as bicarbonates which are also produced in the parietal cells from hydroxyl ions and carbon dioxide. This hydroxyl ion was generated when the water was broken down in the parietal cells. 
this reacts, this hydroxyl ion reacts with carbon dioxide to produce bicarbonate ions. The enzyme, react, uh, the enzyme necessary for this uh, reaction is carbonic anhydrase. Okay, now we saw how the hydrogen ions are produced in the lumen. But still, as you all know, hydrochloric acid is made up of hydrogen and chloride ions. We got hydrogen, now it's time to get the chloride ion. The chloride ion is secreted into the parietal cells by an exchanger which exchanges bicarbonate ion and chloride ion. The chloride ion which, was sec which is present inside the blood is taken into the parietal cell by exchanging the bicarbonate ion from the parietal cell to the bloodstream. Now there's an inter interesting fact to note here which I'll tell you in some time. Then this chloride ion which entered the parietal cell now enters the gastric lumen and it reacts with hydrogen ions to form HCl which is hydrochloric acid. Now this is the mechanism by which the gastric acid is secreted. Hope you got this. And the interesting thing which I was telling you is that as soon as the bicarbonate ion enters the blood vessel that is the gastric veins the HCl also enters the gastric lumen. So what happens is the gastric content that is the gastric lumen becomes more acidic whereas at the same time the gastric vessels that is the gastric vein becomes more alkaline at the same time. So what I'm trying to say is after taking meal what happens is gastric contents become acidic whereas your gastric vessels becomes alkaline. Okay? You gotta know this fact. Okay, as a summary, the final secretion of the gastric secretion contains water, hydrochloric acid, potassium chloride, and sodium chloride. The main thing which is required among all of these is the hydrochloric acid. So it's highlighted here. And you all may be knowing already that the pH of gastric acid is about 0.8 to 1 around that range. So it's highly acidic. Now, let's see about the regulation of gastric acid secretion. There are a few factors that stimulate gastric secretion. This includes acetylcholine, gastrin, and histamine. Acetylcholine are synth is synthesized from parasympathetic nerve endings in the gastric wall. This acetylcholine can stimulate gastric acid secretion as well as digestion. Okay. Now, the gastrin is secreted from the G cells as I have told you earlier. These G cells are present in the pyloric antrum. Imagine in your mind, the pyloric antrum is located in the lower part of the stomach. From here the gastrin is stimulated upon stimulation. The gastrin is secreted upon stimulation. This gastrin goes up into the upper part of the stomach and what happens is there are few cells in the upper part of the stomach. That is. Uh, in the body of the stomach which are known as enterochromaffin like cells also known as ECL e cells in as uh, abbrevi in, in, in abbreviated form so from the enterochromaffin like cells the gastrin stimulates the secretion of histamine this histamine directly stimulates the secretion of gastric acid this is the mechanism by which all these um, substances stimulate gastric secretion now there are various phases of gastric secretion such as cephalic phase, gastric phase and intestinal phase. The most interesting phase among all these three is the cephalic phase. You know why? The cephalic phase of gastric acid secretion starts even before you consume the food. Just by the sight of food or by the thought, thought of food in your mind, the gastric acid starts to secrete in, in your stomach. Interesting, right? So. What happens is, when you're sitting in your classroom and you're just thinking about any food, your gastric parietal cells start to secrete gastric acid even before you consume your food. So this concept is implicated in the pathogenesis of peptic ulcer disease, but it's, the pathogenesis is still not proven clearly. Now, the next phase is known as gastric phase. This phase is the very important phase in the ga gastric secretion. 
So this phase occurs when the food re reaches the stomach, okay? So this is responsible for about 60% of gastric secretion. The next phase is intestinal phase. This phase is not very significant. It's, it's, it contributes to about 10% of the gastric secretion. When the food digested from the stomach enters the upper part of the duodenum, what happens is this stimulates some amount, very minimal amount of gastric acid secretion. This phase is known as intestinal phase. Okay, you've got to know all the three phases of gastric secretion. Now, let's, know, let's talk about inhibition of gastric secretion. Talking about inhibition of gastric secretion, you need to know about the following two, two, two headings. First one is reverse enterogastric reflex. The second one is hormones. As the name suggests, Reverse enterogastric reflex means there is a reflex which controls something and it's reverse. And as the name suggests, enterogastric, the reflex is from the intestine to the stomach. So it's reverse enterogastric reflex. Okay, nothing much to complicate. Yeah, then when the chyme from the stomach, when the chyme is present in the small intestine, what happens is this distance the wall of the small intestine. And through some neural mechanism, through the nerves present in the stomach wall, to the intestinal uh, nerves present in the intestinal wall, they send signal to the stomach, and this inhibits further secretion of gastric contents. And they are also known to inhibit the motility of the stomach. The basic idea of doing this is to delay gastric emptying and delay gastric digestion, as the intestine is already full with gastric contents. Okay. So, to make it simple and uh, like to tell it clearly, what happens is when the intestine is fully distended already with chyme, the intestine, the nerves present in the wall of intestine sends inhibitory signals to the stomach. So, this decreases the secretion as well as motility, thereby delaying the gastric emptying. Okay, this is known as reverse enterogastric reflex. The other way by which there is inhibition of gastric secretion is by hormones such as secretin, VIP, which is vasoactive intestinal peptide, and somatostatin. The secretin is a hormone which is very important in regulating pancreatic secretion. However, in gastric secretion, what happens is secretin inhibits gastric secretion. You gotta remember this. Now let's talk about secretion of pepsinogen. Pepsinogen is basically secreted by peptic cells which are also known as chief cells you can simply remember this by peptic pep present in the peptic and pep present in the pepsinogen so peptic cells secretes pepsinogen easy to remember the pepsinogen is an inactive precursor so pepsinogen by itself is not active so it is activated to pepsin by hydrochloric acid in the stomach so pepsinogen is secreted by the peptic cells it's an inactive molecule so as soon as it is released into the stomach lumen the hydrochloric acid present in the lumen will act on it and converts it to pepsin so it is active only at ph of about 1.8 to 3.5 approximately so here basically i'm trying to say what i'm trying to say is pepsin is active only at acidic ph in case of excessive alkaline pH in the stomach, pepsin is totally inactivated or partially inactivated which greatly affects the protein digestion. Okay, so pepsin is basically a prote proteolytic enzyme. It helps in protein digestion. It's very important in protein digestion. And I wanted to tell one more fact to you. The stomach is not concerned with digestion of carbohydrates. Okay, there are no specific enzymes which are present in the stomach which are known to contribute to the digestion of carbohydrates. The digestion of carbohydrates, however, start in the mouth or the oral cavity itself by the presence of salivary amylase enzymes. However, as the, as the food in the mouth reaches the stomach along with the salivary amylase, the salivary amylase enzyme gets deactivated by the hydrochloric acid in the stomach. So, after the carbohydrates reach the small intestine, the pancreatic secretion, the pancreatic amylase, will take over the digestion of carbohydrates. So what I'm trying to say is, stomach is not associated with much of digestion of carbohydrates.
Okay. Now, as I've told you earlier, the stomach is also involved in the secretion of something known as intrinsic factor. Intrinsic factor is also secreted by parietal cells. Can you re can you recollect what else the parietal cells secrete? Yeah, you're right. The parietal cells also secrete the main thing of gastric acid, which is hydrochloric acid. Now, this intrinsic factor is very essential for vitamin B12 absorption in ileum. Okay, the intrinsic factor, which is secreted from the parietal cells in the stomach, binds to vitamin B12, and this gets absorbed in the ileum, which is the distal part of small intestine. Now, there's a clinical aspect regarding this, which is very interesting. In conditions such as chronic gastritis, where there is chronic uh, inflammation, which means um, irritation of the stomach or inflammation of the stomach for a prolonged time, what happens is there will be destruction of the parietal cells. So, due to destruction of parietal cells, acid cannot be secreted, as well as intrinsic factor cannot be secreted. Absence of gastric acid is known as achlorhydria, which affects digestion to a greater extent, and Deficiency of intrinsic factor will lead to vitamin B12 deficiency, okay? So vitamin B12 deficiency will lead to a condition known as pernicious anemia, which is a maturation defect of red blood cells. The red blood cells will not be able to mature properly. Now, let's talk about peptic ulcer. Peptic ulcer occurs when the integrity of the gastric mucosal barrier is affected. What happens when the integrity of the gastric mucosal barrier is affected? The stomach wall, which was protected earlier by the mucosal barrier, will be directly exposed to the hydrochloric acid. This will lead to ulceration or erosion of the gastric wall. And this can complicate to cause a perforation and severe bleeding. A bacteria which is implicated in peptic ulcer which is associated with most of the cases of peptic ulcer race, Helicobacter pylori. Download our lecture slides on our Patreon page and much more cool features are waiting for you on our Patreon page. So visit patreon.com slash simple. Just click on the link in the description. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel Medbits Made Simple. Share this video to your friends and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and Google+. And support us by donating on Patreon. Thank you.